Hi guys, it's Lynn here. Hope everyone is having a wonderful and safe day. Now today guys, I'm doing a, a little bit of a bit of an update sort of video. I'm using neem oil as a horticultural spray for your all your house plants and your cacti and succulents, both as a foliar drench and also as a soil drench to get rid of annoying bugs on your plants. And this is probably my second year now of using neem oil and I have to say very, very impressed. Because whenever we go a few weeks without sort of using it, then after a few months you start noticing the bugs coming back again. We were using it all last, uh, all through last summer, spring and summer, on the cacti succulents in the polytunnel. And I have to say, this has got to be the first time ever when we checked all the cacti succulents in the polytunnel the other day, we've not seen any signs of bugs. And I went through every single one um, with a micro, little micro um, loop and no bugs anywhere. And all the ones that have previously, previously had spider mite damage, all we growing out of it. So very, very happy with it. And we have been using it indoors on our house plants and some of the cacti succulents, but not as regular because we don't really seem to have such a problem indoors. But anyway, the other day we noticed some of our ferns um, with that really annoying black, very minute, tiny little thrip, very common pest. And usually the only signs that you see of it is you notice that the tips of your house plants tend to go a little bit brown and crispy. And then you sometimes notice little tiny little black hard bits falling onto the floor. Sounds disgusting, but that's actually the thrips um, poo apparently. Um, you're, they're very very hard to see and then you pull, pull the leaves and you can see sometimes the tiny little black tips. Very very microscopic even if you have very good eyesight. But anyway, um, that, that's one of many types of common pests that you get. Mealybug is probably one of the worst. Spider mite is the most awful because you don't see them until the damage is done. But with the neem oil, I have to say it's been amazing for spider mites, especially with the cacti. And I have made probably about three different videos on how to use neem oil for as a foliar drench to get rid of pests and also as a soil drench. Now it works in many ways. The reason why I'm doing this video again is you may not have seen them videos. And because we're going to be using it on the ferns and some of other houseplants, it's a good opportunity to do a bit of a recap. I'm going to link the other two previous videos I've made, probably two or three, I'll do two, that I've made in a lot more depth on using horticultural neem oil as a soil drench and a foliar drench for cacti and succulents. And also one we did on using on houseplants, including ferns. And it works in many ways. First of all, it's one of the not a dangerous types of insecticides because it's not really, although it's an insecticide, it works in many different ways to the ones, the normal ones, the contact ones or the systemic ones. This is completely harmless to wildlife and bees and nature and does not harm your plants. Some insecticides tend to scorch your plants, you know, they can be a bit of a nuisance. This is very, very safe as long as you use it away from direct sunshine and don't use it on very warm, hot, sunny days, obviously. And it also, it's great, not only does it work as an insecticide, it also works as a, as a fungicide as well. And as a soil drench, it's absolutely brilliant to, to get rid of them annoying uh, fungus gnats and the other type of things you get living in soil. And it also, the plant takes it up and it also acts as a nourishment for the plants. It actually does them good. And you recommend probably using it during the spring and summer when the plants are actively growing, usually every week um, until the pests have gone. With neem oil, it doesn't work as quickly as some of the systemic insecticides would or the contact ones. When you spray your plants, especially with things like spider mites, it will smother them, the neem oil will smother them, and it will have a, certainly bring them down straight away. But to get rid of it long term, neem oil works on the insect's reproductive system. And what this does then is when the insects carry on breeding and the babies then breed, it over time, over a series of weeks and series of uses, uses of using neem oil, it completely stops um, them from reproducing properly and in the end it gets rid of all pests. And it's a long lasting um, way of getting rid of bugs as well and far safer than using um, a lot of the chemical insecticides. And as I say, it's safe for you. So if you're using it indoors, especially on house plants, it's safe to breathe in and it's safe for animals if you have pets at home and little children as well as ourselves. And 
as I say, it's very, it works out extremely economical as well. And as I say, do check out the other videos I've made on neem oil. Um, links to them videos up above. And I'll also put a link at the end of this video. And if you want to know how to purchase neem oil, make sure you only use horticultural grade neem oil, not the neem oil you can get from the, the beauty salons and normal chemist shops, drug stores, because that's mainly for your skin. This particular one I use is just for horticultural grade, but you can you also use it on your skin as well. And it's pure, 100% pure neem oil. This is the brand I use, very happy with it. It's a brand called Pink Sun, and I get it on Amazon. And I have to say, it lasts, I think this is the same one I've had for about two years, and it's only, say, a small 250 millilitres, it lasts for absolutely ages because it's so concentrated. And I'm going to show you, I have made in the other videos how you mix it up. I'm going, as I'm mixing it up now, I'm going to show you in this video. Um, and as I say, if you're interested in purchasing this, I'll put links down below in the about section of this video on the links to the Amazon page. I think they mail out pretty much worldwide anyway. And what you have to do is you mix it with, and I'm going to explain why I've got it in a cup now. You have to mix it with horticultural grade liquid soap and as I say don't just use any type of, of liquid soap that's scented or got loads of chemicals and everything. this is very 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 gentle and um, this is safe to water into your plants as well as safe for using on their foliage as well so there we go guys that's a little bit about this and what I'm going to be doing now is mixing it up now what it is the, the only downside I always find with neem oil is that it solidifies at room temperature so to give it a, to use it at a liquid, as a liquid, you have to sort of warm it up first. And I just, I just soak it for about five minutes in a cup of warm water, not boiling water, you'll melt the plastic, warm water. And then as you can see here, it's liquid. So that's just a little tip because it's going to be a bit annoying when it, we're trying to pour it in and it's all um, sort of hard and it doesn't come out. So then with every litre, as I say, it's five millilitres probably about a teaspoon um, to every 10 millilitres of the liquid soap so it's twice the liquid soap to the neem and people say can I just use the neem you don't you certainly can't use it neat because that will burn your plants however safe it is you have to dilute it and you have to use soap because the soap helps to emulsify um, the oil as such so you have to use the two together bear that in mind and I've got made of exactly a litre here one of these little spray bottles here if you're using it as a soil drench then you can just put it into a watering can. But as I say, we're going to be using this as a spray, as a foliar spray on our house plants now. And then what you do, give everything a good shake. It doesn't really matter if you put the neem oil in first or the soap. I like to put the soap in first because I think that helps and um, instantly sort of adds as a bit of a base then to put the, the horticultural oil in. And so this little measuring jug, make sure you use a reliable measuring jug. That's five millilitres and that's 10 millilitres. So I'm going to put five millilitres of the neem, 10 millilitres of that, obviously separate times. So here we go, 10 millilitres first of the, um, of the soap. That's it, exactly 10 millilitres. Yep, on the line, on there. So here we go, five millilitres of the neem. Right, so it's half to what you use with the soap. Pour it in like so. And then you want to make sure it's completely mixed. As you can see there, that's the oil and the soap together. And then I'm going to give it a good old shake. It's really important that you mix it. Don't just go spraying or watering in straight away. So shakey, shakey, shake. And you'll know when it's really thoroughly mixed because it will sort of foam up. Make sure it's really, 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 really mixed. It's got like a washing machine, guys. <laughs> so I just check that. Oh. Yeah, see that froth? That's what you want. So it's all frothing like that. So the soap and the oil has completely mixed. So there we go. That's it done. This is our lovely um, peace lily, isn't it? lovely um, plant here that's got, as you can see, signs of where it's got um, thrip damage on there. Very annoying. And as you see, it's very hard to actually see the pests. You just see the damage. So we normally would be using a lot of neem during the spring and summer, but we went over the winter months, we sort of didn't see any pests on the plant. So we stopped using it for a bit, as you do. And evidence that when you stop, 
after a few months it does come back again and everything that when you're using it it really does keep them at bay so we're going to spray all of this and as i say don't spray in direct sun or excessive heat and if you have grow lights like we have here make sure you turn them off when you're spraying you're going to be turning them off on there as well because if you spray them when you've got grow lights on that's the same as the sun you'll end up with them scorch so there we go that's showing you how to mix it up if you're watching this and you want to know for the first time and so do check the other videos out as well and uh, that's that and let's get going and spraying <laughs> So here you go, pump up the old pump and spray. And before I go any further, I want to give a very special thank you to my wonderful fiance, Hans, who is behind the camera, who's been behind the camera filming me during this video. So if you're not familiar with Hans, do go over and check out his amazing YouTube channel, Family of Cactus and Other Beauties, Licks up above. <laughs> it's great and I've got my hands free, otherwise it's a bit difficult to try and do this with a camera in one hand. And uh, what you want to do is pump this up. It's a bit temperamental, this pumper. You want to make sure that all of the foliage is completely soaked here. And if we was going to do the whole of the, the soil drenching and everything like that, don't need to do the soil drenching on these. These have recently been repotted. Hans repotted all these, did an amazing job of it. And uh, you want to make sure that it's sort of about this far away, a few inches away, just thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly spray all of the leaves and as I say the sun was coming through today it's a cloudy day and um, these are in a bit of a north facing window anyway so it doesn't matter but if you live in a lovely sunny climate you get sun most days lucky you uh, probably best to do this off an evening time because it needs a few hours to be getting to the plants before it the sun comes out the following day here you go and I say soil drench as well I mentioned in the other video I've got and here we go. And they, this is to say it's actually like a tonic as well for the plants. You know, if people say, oh, I don't know if it's got bugs or not. This is not going to hurt. Other than a lot of insecticides where people say, oh, I don't know if the plant's got bugs. It's just showing damage. And I'll give it a spray of an insecticide just to be on the safe side. This is going to do no harm. So if you've got no pests whatsoever, it actually gives the plants a bit of a booster. They like it. There we go. That's all our fern is done. Right then guys, now I'm in the living room and I'm going to do the window. I just want to mention as well that the neem oil is perfectly safe for nearly every single type of plant. But when it comes to things like tillandsias, commonly known as air plants, I'd be very careful. I have no experience of using neem oil with air plants. Me and Hans have a lot of air plants, um, but we've never used a neem oil on them because obviously neem oil is a coating that covers the plants and... Um, air plants, tillandsias, have trichomes that they're taking all their nourishment and breathe through. And I'd just be very wary about using an air plant and tillandsias. If anybody knows different to me, let me know because it's, I've not been able to find anything out of that. Thankfully, tillandsias, air plants, I've never had any experience with bugs on them. But obviously, they're plants at the end of the day, no doubt they get bugs. But I, I, but I wouldn't recommend using neem on them. That's only my recommendations because I've got no experience of using it on them. But every other type of house plant, and even outdoor plants, perfect. So just wanted to mention that while, while I was on it. So here we go. I'll do the little... Chlorophyte and Bonnie there, and then we have um, the lovely Monstera here, Adansonii, commonly known as the monkey's face. <laughs> but a good old, good old soaking too. And then here we have my um, Epiphyllum chrysocardium, also known as Lenicerius chrysocardium, nicknamed the the fern cactus. Even though it looks more like a fern, it is a cactus. <laughs> So you want to make sure all the leaves are completely dripping. And uh, there we go. Then we've got the streptocarpuses as well. They always come down. I always find with thrips and green flies and all the like. And as I say, this neem oil is safe to use every week until all types of pests have gone. Or if you just want to keep, once you've got rid of any type of pests, you know, use it for the first week, for the first month. And um, after that, then you can just use it once every two two weeks to keep them at bay and that's it so don't need to show you the whole the whole procedure as you know I'm going to carry on with these now so guys thank you so much for watching and as I say if you want to purchase the neem oil you want to know how to and the horticultural soap I'll put links down below for Amazon and uh, if you want to be born how to grow cacti and succulents then do check out my website desert plants of Avalon 
www.thepeacefulpeopleshow.com. I don't want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness, and tons and tons of plant power <laughs> from across the Emerald Isle. And until my next video, bye. Diddy, cactus power.